Hi students, welcome to this English video lessons for 12th. Right, today in this session we are going to learn about the poem of Edwin Mew. The title of the poem is Castle. Right, okay. Edwin Mew. Have you heard about Edwin Mew? Right, before learning about the author, let's learn about the title the castle how to pronounce the word castle here t is silent so you have to pronounce this word as castle right okay what is a castle have you heard about castle right castle is a building particularly built for the emperors, the kings, the powerful person in the society and that too in the medieval period. Right. And have you ever visited a castle? And what thoughts come to your mind when you think about a castle? Yes, you have soldiers, you have high walls, water surrounded, the castle. Yes, good. Okay, let's learn about the author. The author of this poem is Edwin Mew. He was born in the year 1887 and died in 1959. He was a renowned Scottish poet. He is a novelist, translator and critic. He was remembered for his vivid poetry. He began writing poetry at a relatively old age and over the course of several years worked out an individual philosophical style for which he gained recognition later in his life. His first poems, The Chorus of Newly Dead, these two works contain Edwin New's initial attempts with great writings. And his later collections include Variations on a Time Theme, The Narrow Place, The Voyage and other poems, The Labyrinth and One Foot in Eden. The next thing is, we have many castles, forts in India. And in our capital city, New Delhi, we have a fort. Do you know the name of that fort? Yes, yes, good. It's Red Fort. And in Hyderabad, we have another fort. It's a famous fort. Do you know the name of that fort? Good. It's Golgonda Fort. Right. In Chennai, yeah, it's Fort St. George. And in your book, you have a fort. The name of the fort is Jinji Fort. Do you know where it is located? Good. It is located in Vilupuram district of Tamil Nadu. Okay, students, let's learn about the poet. Edwin Muir was a renowned Scottish poet. He is a novelist, translator and a good critic. He was remembered for his vivid poetry. He began writing poetry at a relatively old age. But in the course of several years, he worked out as an individual and soon he became a prolific writer with his own philosophical style of writing. And some of his famous poems are First Poems, Chorus of the Newly Dead, Variations on a Time Theme, The Narrow Place, The Voyage and other poems. So Edwin Mew is a very well-known Scottish poet, novelist and a translator and also a good critic. Right. Let's move to the poem. The castle. 
The castle is an allegorical poem. What is that allegorical poem? It seems to be different. What is an allegorical poem? Allegorical poem is a complete narrative that involves characters and events that stand for an abstract idea or event. Do you understand that? Okay. In order to make it easier, in other words, a story, a poem or a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. So I think it's a little bit difficult to understand the allegorical poem. But in an allegorical poem, we have two meanings that we have to understand. The first one is the literal meaning. The second one is the symbolic meaning. Literal meaning is easy to understand. Whereas the symbolic meaning, what the poet wants to tell to his readers is difficult. For that, the reader has to read between the lines to learn the symbolic meaning of the poem. So that's what makes the difference between a prose piece and a poem. So here Edwin knew he makes a good attempt in showcasing the beauty of the castle as well as the strength of the castle as well as the weakness of the castle in his poem throughout this extraordinary writing of six stanzas. So let's learn the poem, the castle. But before going into the poem, we have to learn some of the difficult words in the poem. Because it will help us to learn the poem with a good view and with a good understanding. And also we can connect with the poet's mind. Okay, so we have two pictures. The one towards the left is the turret wall. Here, the turret wall means a small tower on top of a castle. This can be seen in almost every castle, fort, if you have visited a tourist spots. And the next one towards the right, we have another picture. This is called Mavos. Here, you can find the people trimming or leveling the lawns lawns is nothing but grass and the next one as you know provender provender means food towards the right you have another picture that's called towering battlements towering battlements are tall towers with the openings to shoot the enemies in many films you might have watched huge towers where a soldier with his weapon stands to prevent the entry of the enemy as well as they will attack from that place safely. The next one is bait. Bait is intended to entice someone. For example, you might have a bait for catching a rat. Yeah. The next one, tier. Tier is kind of a rooms in a castle which can be seen one above the other. The next one is wicked gate. Wicked gate is a small gate which can be found behind or near the entrance of a huge castle. And another one is maze. Maze is a confusing path. Okay, the next word, the new word to us is Vizen Vader. Who is a Vizen Vader? Yeah, Vizen Vader is an old god. That is another name for castle is citadel. Citadel, a safe and strong fort. Okay, students, now we shall learn the poem. 
The poem has six stanzas. Each stanza has five lines. Poet Edwin Mew has written beautifully with his choice of words. His rhyme scheme can be seen as A, B, A, A, B throughout all the six stanzas. Right. We have learned more about the author, more about the castle. Now, let's see what's happening in this poem. Right. This poem, Castle, is a monologue of a soldier. Already I have told you it's an allegorical poem and now it's a monologue of a soldier. A soldier who missed something, who feels sorry for his action or his friend's action or his inmates in the castle. He laments or he cries happiness. We don't know what's going to happen. Shall we move to the poem? Right. Let's read the first stanza. All through that summer at ease we lay and daily from the turret wall we march the mowers in the hay. On the enemy half a mile away they seemed no threat to us at all. So beautifully written and the choice of words it seems to be extraordinary from Edwin New. Right. The castle is a strong place. But here in the castle the soldiers had no threat. That can be seen in the first line. All through that summer at ease we lay. The soldiers laid comfortably taking rest. They are not worried about the enemies. And their daily duty, that is from the turret wall, they have to watch what's happening around the palace, what's happening around the country. But now they are, have no problem. They just take rest. They are at ease all throughout the summer season. And what did they watch? They watched mowers. As I told you, mowers or farmers, they trim the grass, they level the lawns. And what is the duty of the soldier? They have to look out for the enemy. So in the fourth line we can see, and the enemy half a mile away, the neighboring enemy may be someone who is an enemy for that country, for that castle. But they are not so near, they are half a mile away. And they seemed no threat to them. That can be seen in the fifth line. They seemed no threat to us at all. So the soldiers had no threat. They are peaceful, they are not worried, they are happy with their job. Going to the next stanza. For what we thought had we to fear with our arms and provender load on load, our towering battlements tier on tier and friendly allies drawing near on every leafy summer road. Right. The second stanza also, the soldiers or the soldier did not feel insecure. The first stanza we saw, they are happy, they are at ease, they have no threat. And the second stanza also we could find, they have no threat, no significant threat. Because friendly allies are near, enemies are half a mile away, friendly allies are near to them and they need not worry about war because they have weapons. And in the second line we can see they have loads and loads of provender. Provender means yeah, food. They have provender, they have arms 
and they have towering battlements, tier and tier. They have many space if an enemy attacks, they will not wait. They will attack soon. They will soon wage a war. Right. But they don't fear about war. They don't think about war because they feel their castle is secured. They have loads and loads of provender. Their friendly allies are near. And uh, towards the last line of the second stanza, we could find on every leafy summer road that if an enemy enters the country, soon they will be known because of the uh, maybe walking along the summer leaves, fallen leaves. If someone enters the country, walking along the forest in that summer fallen leaves they will be noticed easily so they don't have any worries right so the first stanza are no threat the second stanza also we don't have any threat because provenders arms weapons and friendly allies are near to them right moving to the third stanza our gates were strong, our walls were thick, so smooth and high. No man could win a foothold there. No clever trick could take us dead or quick. Only a bird could have gotten. So here, Edwin Muir shows the confidence of the soldiers. And uh, the person who is narrating the poem, the soldier. He speaks through the words of Edwin Mew. Our gates were strong. Our walls were thick. As I told you, castle has a strong wall, strong gate, strong commanders, strong force around them. And here too, in the first line, we could see that and uh, the high walls are so smooth and high. So when the walls are so smooth, no man can reach the top. No man can jump over the high wall. And there is no foothold there. And no clever trick could take us dead or quick. No one can make trick to cross the or jump the wall. Let's move to the next stanza. What could they offer us for bait? Our captain was brave and we were true. There was a little private gate, a little wicked wicked gate. The wizen warder led them through. Here, the first two lines. Again, the soldier through the words makes the castle the safest place because there is no use for bait as I told you if you want to capture an animal or if you want to attract someone we have to use bait here no bait can be used to attract the powerful soldiers because their captain was brave and we all were true to our captain. So no need of bait. Yes. The third and fourth and fifth line. There was a little private gate. There was a private gate. That's the entry. The betrayal starts there. Someone has allowed somebody to enter through the wicket gate. As I told you, wicket gate is a small gate. So who let them? Yeah, the last line we could see. The wizard warder led them through an old guard 
has lit somebody to enter the castle, the powerful castle, strong castle with high walls, thick walls, smooth walls. But now through a small wicked gate, an old god allowed someone to enter the castle. What will happen if someone enters? Right, let's see in the next stanza. Oh, then our maze of tunneled stone grew thin and treacherous as yap. The cause was lost without a groan. The famous citadel overthrown and all its secret galleries bare. It was a large, big, thick, strong, brave king's castle. But now the strong walls now become a maze. Maze? Maze is a difficult path. The entry and the entry may be easy, but exit is difficult. But here the entry and the exit is going to be tremendously difficult for the inmates inside the castle. And uh, the air has grew thin. And uh, everywhere you could see treacherous, disloyal things. There is no loyalty because the enemy has entered through a wicket gate. Once the castle was thick, now it has become thin. That's the beauty of the poem. You could see the choice of words here. Thick and thin. Right. And in the fourth line and the third line, you could see the cause was lost without a groan. There is no one to shout. Oh, we have lost our castle. Oh, we are defeated. Because everything has cut over. Because of disloyalty. Someone entered through that wicket gate and captured that castle all of a sudden. So they can't even understand what happened to the castle. So the castles, the secret galleries, everything has become opened. Right. What happened? Who did it? Let's move to the sixth stanza. How can this shameful tale be told? I will maintain until my death. We could do nothing being sold. Our only enemy was gold. And we had no arms to fight it with. So here, the soldier, he narrates, he moans. We could see his lament. We could see his worries. He could not believe the treachery that happened from inside their own castle. An old god, he allowed the enemies enter the castle. Just for? Yes. So who is the enemy? The enemy is the enemy. But here, their inmates, their fellow companions, their fellow soldier, someone who sold the chasm, sold all these treasures, maybe, for a cold. That can be seen in the fourth line. Our enemy was gold. The castle was sold for gold. And this morning soldier could, could not find any time to explore inside the walls. They thought about the strength of the walls. They thought about the provender. They spoke about smooth walls that could not be reached. They talked about friendly allies. They spoke about their brave king, brave captain and the true soldiers, but someone from the castle 
has sold the castle for a gold. And this Edwin Murray ends the poem, Lost Line. And we had no arms to fight it with. We have powerful weapons. We have towering battlements. But we have no weapons to fight against this bribe. That's to stop bribing with the help of a goal. Someone sold them. Right. Okay. I think you understood this poem, Castle. Right. What do you understand from this poem? What is the moral of this poem? If someone betrays a friend, a family, country, for money, what will you do? We have to beware of the things that surround us. We have to search inward as well as outward. We should not simply go away with small mistakes or simple carelessness. We have to make everything perfect. Only then we could save us from great disasters. Okay, so we have completed the poem. Shall we move to the questions? Right, so that you will be ready to answer for your appreciation questions. Who is the narrator in the poem? The narrator is the soldier. Right. How long had the soldiers been in the castle? All through the summer. Okay. Why were the soldiers in the castle fearless? They don't have fear. Why? Yeah, because of the strong and thick high walls. Okay. Where were the enemies? Yeah, in the first stanza you could find. They are half a mile away. Right. Why does the narrator say that the enemy was no threat at all? As we learned from the first two stanza, they don't have any threat. They feel comfortable. They feel safe because of the brave king. And they are true to their kingdom. Right. The next question. Did the soldiers fight with the enemies face to face? There was no war. No war. No fight. But the castle was defeated. Okay. Who had led the enemies in? The risen warder. An old god. The next question. How did the enemies enter the castle? The enemies entered the castle through the small picket gate. Why did the narrator feel helpless? Yeah, the soldier. He spoke about everything. But finally he was helpless because irrespective of their imagination, the enemies attacked, entered the castle and destroyed everything. They could not understand what happened. How it happened? Who made it? Only after all the distractions, they came to know that they were sold for gold. Right. Who was the real enemy? Is it the old god or other soldiers? The real enemy is here. It seems to be the gold. So gold has become the real enemy. So when you are free, you have to read that parallel reading poem on page number 23. Thank you. நிகழ்ச்சியை பற்றிய தங்களின் மேலான கருத்துக்களை கீழ்கண்ட முகவரிக்கு கடிதம் மூலமாகவோ 
மின்னஞ்சல் மூலமாகவோ குறுஞ்செய்தி மூலமாகவோ தெரியப்படுத்தலாம் அனுப்ப வேண்டிய முகவரி சிறப்பு அலுவலர் கல்வி தொலைக்காட்சி எட்டாம் தளம் அண்ணா நூற்றாண்டு நூலகம் காந்தி மண்டப சாலை கோட்டூர்புரம் சென்னை ஆறு தொலைபேசி எண் ஏழு எட்டு இரண்டு நான்கு பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்று ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம்